Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Parthalanganathan. Uh, I am from the uh, batch of 94, uh, E, um, uh, Narmada Hostel. Yeah, I think my uh, journey to uh, IIT Madras was very similar to everybody else. Uh, I think um, a, a lot of preparation and uh, a lot of uh, courses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, within IIT, uh, I, I think there's so many favorite memories. Right? I mean, this is true for everybody. I think um, IIT is uh, most people's formative years, and, and so they have a lot of fond memories. So, uh, Obviously, the camaraderie, uh, uh, the, um, I still remember a lot of uh, uh, sessions where uh, uh, my room in my hostel uh, uh, used to be a place where a lot of people used to uh, uh, come in and uh, sit and talk. And um, I suspect it was because I was too nice to throw them out. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it was fun because uh, there would be a lot of people coming in and uh, chatting. And uh, I learned a lot from my classmates, I think. Uh, uh, the journey that I had, I, I, uh, I was a very introverted, very shy person when I got out of high school. <laughs> Arguably, I still am sometimes, but uh, uh, I, I think it was a journey of um, uh, finding your confidence, finding your voice. Uh, so that, that was very helpful. And uh, uh, my classmates were um, uh, oftentimes role model where I would look at them and say, wow, I, I can learn so much from them. So uh, um, that was definitely interesting. Uh, 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 I think uh, some of my other favorite memories, um, uh, I, I love the campus. It was so beautiful. I mean, I'd, uh, I'd wake up to uh, uh, deer fighting and uh, uh, monkeys chittering, right? I mean, uh, it was really uh, very nice. And uh, one of my uh, favorite memories was uh, some of the long walks I took. I would love walking from the uh, hostel all the way to the gate. And uh, it was a very scenic uh, path uh, with lots of stuff. And um, often you could take detours and uh, uh, do some stuff. And uh, uh, it, it, was, it was very, uh, very, very relaxing. I, I, I really used to enjoy those as well. And of course, all the other stuff, the mess, the uh, OAT, uh, uh, Taramani, all, all that stuff was fun too. Uh, sure. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, I, I think two, I would say two things. One, of course, we had fantastic professors. I still have uh, fond memories of um, all the professors I worked with, uh, um, in particular, uh, uh, the late Dr. Srinivasan, who was my mentor, who I did my thesis with. Uh, I, I learned so much. I mean, uh, it was funny. I did two projects with him. Uh, one of them was this um, project called uh, Generalized Tutorial Package, and this was in the early 90s. And uh, it was basically the precursor to what today is Coursera and uh, uh, all the uh, massively online courses. So it was uh, a way to kind of uh, teach through computers. And so we wrote the entire platform. And, and, and I'm, I'm still very amused at how uh, uh, naive it was for me as an uh, undergraduate to think about uh, some of the more ambitious things we did. We had like a, a video and uh, we did some really crazy things there. And then I had a second project on uh, security as well. And uh, uh, Dr. Junjunwala. So I, I learned um, my passion for computer architecture and that, that's what my career has been around. Uh, so he was the very first class I took. And uh, uh, he had a very interesting style where he uh, asked the students to teach. And I still remember being terrified of my first lecture where I thought about computer architecture. and. Uh, I must have done something right. I, I still teach computer architecture to this day after three decades. So uh, um, that was very nice. Um, uh, the labs were very nice, um, uh, Professor Shankaran, Professor Natarajan. So a lot of, lot of really good memories there. Uh, but, but I think to me, the bigger journey, and, and, and I think a lot of people don't uh, get this as well. Uh, IIT Madras, everyone assumes is the most elite educational institution, but it is the character building to me that is the key uh, IIT brand. And I, I mentioned earlier, uh, and just coming in as a shy, introverted person and then learning, um, I learned a lot about how to take initiative. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, leadership. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, collaboration. Uh, I learned a lot about humility, right? I mean, you, you, you go uh, look at uh, all the other amazing people. Everyone is um, their school topper and they've all uh, done really well at school. And, uh, and it's so geographically diverse. Uh, you learn from so many different backgrounds. Uh, uh, so so there's, uh, I, I would actually say I value the uh, non-technical things I learned uh, uh, probably as much or even more than the uh, technical stuff. So uh, 
uh, de definitely very, very formative. Yeah, I think uh, this is a good chance for me. Uh, it, it feels like a really long time back. I, I, I still, uh, uh, my, my son is a teenager and he's, um, uh, 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 he'll, he'll be going to college next year. And, uh, and so we have our uh, 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 batch WhatsApp group and uh, we have everybody starting to talk about their kids going to college and we were all reminiscing about, wow, well, uh, it, it feels like we were uh, starting to think about IIT uh, and now our kids are doing that. Uh, uh, but uh, so right after I finished uh, uh, IIT, uh, I uh, uh, did my PhD. Uh, I did my PhD at Rice University with um, another fantastic mentor, Dr. Sarita Adve, uh, who's also an uh, IIT Bombay graduate, uh, incidentally. And um, so I did my PhD in computer architecture. And my uh, uh, PhD was about uh, uh, multi computer multiprocessor designs, and uh, especially looking at uh, uh, databases, media processing. Uh, uh, we wrote an uh, entire simulator from scratch, uh, which was super fantastic. Uh, again, got to work with some really uh, smart people there. Um, and after that, I joined uh, uh, what was then called Digital, and then Digital got acquired by Compaq. Compaq got acquired by uh, HP. So I spent about 15 years there. And then um, uh, the last uh, uh, eight years or so, I've been at Google. And, and so my work has been really uh, uh, starting with the passion I had in computer architecture back at IIT. So I've been looking at uh, system architecture. And uh, so my very first work was on uh, uh, energy efficiency of mobile devices. Uh, so if you look at uh, uh, back again in the um, early 2000s, uh, uh, that was when the very first uh, phones, uh, smartphones were coming in. So we worked on this uh, precursor to the iPhone uh, uh, called uh, uh, an Etsy. Uh, the ETC was the very first uh, research mobile prototype. And so uh, some of the ideas we came up with there, um, one of my most favorite research contributions was uh, this idea around energy adaptive user interfaces. And right now, every single phone that ships in the planet uh, uses that idea. So, uh, uh, and so that's kind of when I really got hooked into being able to uh, um, have your research impact people's lives, right? And I've been very fortunate that a lot of the work I've done since uh, have had impact at that level. Uh, one of the other things we came up with uh, in the early years was uh, this notion of a new kind of processor design. At that time, we called it uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, single ISA multiprocessors, uh, which is a mouthful. But really, if you look at uh, the inside of a computer, uh, again, most uh, mobile systems these days use this. There is a big processor and a small processor. And the idea really was, uh, why would you just use uh, really big processors to do all your work? Because they can be very energy inefficient. And you're looking at battery life, having this mixture of um, uh, processors, uh, each of which is uh, fine-tuned for a certain energy efficiency point is a good thing. So, uh, so heterogeneous multiprocessors was really nice. And then I pivoted from uh, mobile data uh, power management to data center power management. And again, very interesting, and, and this is one of the things that uh, I learned at IIT is um, the uh, ability to take a risk and, and jump, uh, uh, kind of take a leap of faith in some respects, right? When I started doing data center power management, there was nobody else looking at data center power. And in fact, uh, a lot of people would uh, joke and they're like, hey, look, this is not a problem. Uh, there's so much to be done in battery life for uh, handhelds and laptops and so on. Uh, and you've been doing such good work. So why would you leave all of that and go into this uh, uh, very exotic area? And it turned out that I looked at this place and I said, hey, you know what, uh, uh, if you just extrapolate the trend. And, and one of the things uh, one of my mentors always used to say is uh, make the trend your friend. And I found that a very catchy uh, phrase, right? And, uh, and so if you follow the trends, it was very clear to me that this uh, whole uh, backend data center, the cloud, the uh, computers on which uh, Google runs or whatever, right? Uh, they were starting to get bigger and bigger and at some point, the electricity cost, the power was becoming a big constraint there. And so I started looking at data center power. And uh, interestingly enough, three years from when I started doing stuff, it was the uh, hottest, uh, not no pun intended, but it was literally the uh, most uh, uh, important area in the data center space. And uh, 
So I was again very fortunate to do some very uh, uh, fundamental contributions there. Uh, a technique called power capping, which uh, every data center uses these days. Uh, uh, the notion of uh, uh, combining the IT and the facility side, uh, uh, managing workloads uh, for that. So that was very interesting. Uh, so that was really the second epoch where I did a lot of work on data center power and cooling. We had a whole bunch of product launches. Uh, we were able to change the industry. And then the third epoch was really around, uh, uh, once again, taking a leap of faith. I branched into uh, uh, hardcore server design. And so we uh, uh, came up with this whole idea of disaggregated uh, uh, dematerialized servers, which again is a mouthful. Uh, but uh, the idea really is if you take a server uh, uh, or any computer, it, it's pretty straightforward. You have a processor, you have memory, uh, you have uh, these various blocks. And the key idea that we had was what happens if you just break this whole thing apart, you disaggregate it, and then you create these pools of compute, pools of memory. And it turns out that uh, you get tremendous efficiencies, but more importantly, you get the ability to uh, form different things. So uh, you can mix and match and you can basically say, uh, uh, I can um, I, I can create different shapes of computers, which turns out is very well matched with the heterogeneity of uh, workloads that you see in um, cloud computing and so on. Uh, so we did disaggregated data centers. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, a lot of new ideas around uh, non-volatile memory and so on. So that was kind of the uh, um, third epoch. And uh, one of the things, again, I'm very proud of is we had the industry's first uh, uh, ARM-based servers. Um, so I uh, led a project called uh, Project Moonshot at uh, HP. And uh, and now I think uh, ARM-based ARM servers are pretty uh, commonplace. So that's very exciting as well. And then the fourth epoch really is uh, the last few years at Google, where I've been thinking about um, the uh, end of Moore's law, uh, how uh, uh, something uh, in the computer architecture space that we all take as canon has been slowing down, right? And Moore's law, for those of uh, the people listening here, is this uh, law in computer architecture that says computers just get faster. Every two years, they get faster for the same cost. And Moore's law has been underpinning everything from self-driving cars to their tiniest IoT devices, right? Because that's what, as computing gets faster, we invent new stuff. And when that stops, it's pretty fundamental to the industry. So we've been spending a lot of time uh, uh, looking at that. I've, I've been really fortunate to uh, uh, invent some new kind of uh, uh, silicon accelerators. Um, uh, a couple of months back, we talked about uh, uh, video accelerators. and. Uh, uh, this was particularly notable because when uh, COVID hit and uh, everybody has been uh, doing video processing a lot and uh, YouTube video just spiked and uh, uh, Google Meet and Zoom and all that became pretty important. Uh, uh, having this hardware that can make things go faster came in so handy. So it was, uh, again, so this is a common theme is uh, basically being able to solve problems that actually uh, touch people's lives and uh, uh, be, being able to tell uh, uh, people uh, uh, that look, I'm, I'm, I'm working on things that um, when you use Google search, you're, <clears throat> you're using hardware that I've designed or when you use YouTube or uh, when you use Google Meet and so on, right? And uh, my, I talked about my teenagers and uh, uh, you, you know how teenagers think uh, uh, their parents are not uh, very cool. And uh, this is one of the few times when my uh, kids think that um, their dad may have done something useful. Whenever they watch YouTube, they're like, oh my God, my dad did something that uh, uh, runs YouTube faster. So that, that's my claim to fame there. So, so that, that's what uh, my journey so far, but the common theme really is uh, uh, thinking about full system design across hardware and software, think about new system architecture uh, and, and try to get that out uh, in the wild where people can use it. And uh, I would say I've been incredibly fortunate. I think uh, I've been uh, very fortunate that I've been in the right place at the right time. I've had fantastic collaborators. And uh, as I just go through the impact, it's it's kind of, I, I, I always get so humbled because I'm like, wow, well, uh, it, it's, it's not, I don't think of myself as a very smart person, but uh, this is a fantastic track record. And, uh, and, and the only logical conclusion there is uh, there's a lot of luck and a lot of fantastic collaborations involved as well, right? So, so that that's, you can see I can talk on talk about this for a long time, so I'll, I'll stop there. But uh, that that's kind of my journey so far. At Google, uh, I'm the uh, area tech lead for uh, all the infrastructure, so everything from uh, uh, data center to presenting uh, machines as a service in cloud, uh, all the hardware, all the custom silicon, all the surrounding software around it. Uh, um, it's a very exciting job, and uh, 
uh, I'm, I'm super excited about the next five years as well. There's a lot of really uh, uh, exciting opportunities. There's a renaissance in uh, system architecture. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a whole bunch of cool things. And hopefully uh, in five years, uh, 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 if you interview me again, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I will have a lot more to talk about as well.